Hi folks, so we are here today, it's good to be with you and uh, just doing a Bible study with you today um, in an internet cafe, so it's a bit noisy sometimes, so forgive me and so we're going to be looking at uh, the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit so let's come before the Lord and ask His blessing Father God, we thank you for this day uh, we thank you for your grace, we thank you for your love and Lord, we thank you for all your blessings today and Father, we pray that as we look at your word, that Father, you will break the bread of life, that Father, it will be a blessing to us, a help to us, an encouragement to us, and a strength to us in our walk with you. So Father, we pray for your blessings, we pray for your encouragement, and we pray for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So Samuel Chadwick said, the church is helpless without the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Our text today is John chapter 16, verse 13, and it's this. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, and he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is to come. So that's our text today. Samuel Chadwick said, Truth can be known only through the revealer. Ignoring this, scholars and historians, grammarians and antiquarians, critics and agnostics are blind, in the mist of light. So without the Holy Spirit, we can be PhDs and MAs, but if we don't have the Holy Spirit, we won't know the truth. We can't know anything unless God, the Holy Spirit, gives us spiritual life. It says in John chapter 4, verse 14. John chapter 4, verse 14. It says these words, it says, uh, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a wall of well of water springing up into everlasting life. It's the Spirit that gives life. John chapter 7, verse 37. John 7, 37. We read these words. It says, In the last days, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. So if we want to know God, then we need to know about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit it, it is truth. And uh, we turn to John chapter 14, verse 16. It points us to the truth. The Holy Spirit points us to truth. John 14, 16. It says, And I pray the Father, and he shall give another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, who dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. And the Holy Spirit points to Christ. If you turn to John chapter 15, verse 26, it says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So the Spirit points to Christ, and cults point to themselves, they point to myths. Uh, but Christ, uh, but the Holy Spirit points to Christ, yeah? Now if you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 14. It says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, ye the deep things of God. So the Spirit of God is the one that teaches us about God and, and the truth. If you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. It says, now the, Lord, it, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When the work of God is moving and the Spirit of God is working, there is freedom, there is liberty. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 10 and 14, we read these words, when the Spirit of God is moving, to another work of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues. When the Spirit of God is moving, there is order, there is structure, there is the use of the body and their gifts. 
So there is freedom, but there is order and the body using gifts. That's where the Spirit of God's moving. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6, it says, so we, if we want to move in the Spirit, we have to be honest with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 6 to 15. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because these things come with the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience, be not either for partakers with them, for you are sometimes darkness, but now you are light, and the Lord walks children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness, truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather prove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done with them in secret. So we must walk in the light. We must walk in the light. Yeah. Uh, and if we're dry spiritually, then why? Well, let's go back to Romans 5 5. Uh, if we're dry and we're not walk, we're not in the spirit as we should be. Why is that? Romans 5.5 5. It says And hope make us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us We allow the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts and work in our hearts But then if we turn to Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 27 If we're dry spiritually is to remember that we are spiritual people is to remember that you're not walking in carnality anymore you're walking in the Spirit and a lot of us and walking in carnality and forgetting that we're in the spirit. So in Romans 8 it says, Therefore, there is therefore no, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sin to the flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is an attempt against god for it is not subject to the law of god neither indeed can it be so then they that are in the flesh cannot please god but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwelleth in you but if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you have not received the spirit of bondage, you gain to fear that you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So what we have to recognize is that the spirit of God is in us and feed that new nature. And if you're feeling dry spiritually today, it's because you're allowing sin to come in. And you're feeding the old nature rather than the new nature, which is the new Christ, the new man in Christ. Yeah. So that's an introduction about the Holy Spirit. And I want to bring a few points out now. Number one, the reality of the Holy Spirit. We turn to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. We read these words. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not. Verse, verse 1 to 3. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended, that they shall put you out of synagogues. You, the time cometh that, and so killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. These things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father or me. The first point I want to say is the reality of the Holy Spirit is if you are walking in the Holy Spirit, then you will be persecuted. There was a minister who um, was a good man, a good minister, and the congregation spread rumors that he had embezzled money from the church, and it was not true. But the allegation was so powerful because so many people were saying it that he had to leave the church. But it was not true. And so he was persecuted out of his own church when he'd done no wrong. And you might be like that today. If you are following God, if you are in the Holy Spirit, you will be persecuted. That is the reality of the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of God is moving, there will be those who follow God in the Spirit and they will be persecuted. John chapter 15, verse 20. 
Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is no greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. You will be persecuted. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. To Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 says ye and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution and if you turn to we could turn to many others you could turn to Luke chapter 6 verse 22 Luke chapter 6 verse 22 and all bear him witness and wondered at his gracious wit sorry Luke chapter 6, verse 22. Blessed are ye, and shall hate you, they shall separate you from their coming, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Seth. So, you're going to be persecuted. Acts chapter 8, verse 1 and 3. Let's turn to Acts chapter 8, verse 1 and 3. And we could go on and on and on. Acts chapter 8 verse 1 and 3 and Saul was consenting unto his death and at that time there was great persecution against the church so Paul and Saul became to the church and there was persecution for those of God and the Holy Spirit so that's the reality but if you want to move in the Spirit of God then you're going to get persecuted yeah Secondly, the necessity of the Holy Spirit. If you turn to John chapter 16, verse 4 to 7. John chapter 16, verse 4 to 7. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told of them. These things I said unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither thou goest, but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. You might feel that you are a small man of people planting a church. You might feel that you've not got any resources. You might feel a small, despised people in your community, wherever you are, in serving God. Well, you're not alone because in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord was about to die and uh, for sin. And when he was going to die for sin, he was going to leave behind when he rose again and ascended to the Father. He was going to leave a small band of disciples. These disciples were didn't have much money. They didn't have many qualifications. They, they didn't have much about them, humanly speaking. They were a small group of people. And yet this small group of people God used to change the whole Roman Empire. And you might feel that you're a small, despised people today, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do amazing things. Let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37. So the necessity of the Holy Spirit, that is, no matter how weak we feel, the Holy Spirit will fill us and use us mightily for his glory. Ezekiel 37. <coughs> Excuse me. And we read verse 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very, very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest again. He said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bones to his bones. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto them, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, Thus says the Lord, God, come. The four winds of breath, 
and breathe upon the slain and they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our bones are hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O oh, oh my people, I will open your grave and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh, my people, and brought you up out of your graves and you and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. So here there are dry bones in the valley, the, the bone, there are dead bones, basically, and God breathes on them and they become alive, become these skeletons, become real people. And that's a picture of the church. The church is like dead bones, but God can breathe on the church and make it alive on his power. If you turn to Isaiah 44, Isaiah 44, Isaiah chapter 44 We read these words verse 1 and 3 Yet hear O Jacob my servant and Israel whom I have chosen Thus says the Lord that made thee and formed thee from, from the womb which will help thee Fear not O Jacob my servant and thou Jerusalem whom I have chosen For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon dry ground And I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring and they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the watercourses or shall say i am the lord and another shall call himself by name or jacob and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the lord and a surname uh, surname himself by the name of israel so god is saying there you know don't fear that where there's dry ground i'm going to pour water on and, and that's to you as a, a servant of god maybe you're preaching in a church and it's not it's not hearing the word of God as it should. Fear not, for God will pour his, his spirit on that church. You might be a, a missionary and working in a land that doesn't seem to be responding to the gospel. Fear not, for the Holy Spirit will work and, and work in people. So, so whatever opposition you're going through, fear not, the Holy Spirit will work. So the Holy Spirit is going to work. Floods of, of his Holy Spirit are going to come and work in your situation. I think uh, it Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 sorry I'm going to hit your nose Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 verse 2 and 5 I think it says and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with one another tongue, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Spirit of God came at Pentecost and moved powerfully, and that was the birthday of the early church. Ideas are not going to change your situation in your church planting situation. You can have ideas. You know, there are a lot of think tanks amongst many denominations where people get together and think their new ideas of how to move church forward. But ideas are not going to cut it. Human ability. You can call the pastor with great human ability. It's not going to cut it. It's not going to change your situation. You can pour money into your denomination, into your church. It's not going to do it. You can use power, authority, using your authority as a leader to try and move the situation in your church but it's not going to do it the only thing that can change your situation is the spirit of god samuel chadwick says the church is the body of christ and the spirit is the spirit of christ he fills the body directs it move directs its movements controls its members inspires its wisdom supplies its strength that is the holy spirit the necessity of the holy spirit we need the holy spirit the power of the Holy Spirit. If you turn to John chapter 16, verse 8 to 11, John chapter 16, John chapter 16, John chapter 16, verse 8 to 11, it says, 
And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment of sin, because they believe not on me, of righteousness, but I go to my Father, and ye say no more, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. And I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. That is the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, I used to like watching when I was a child uh, those films by Clint Eastwood where he would have the magnum gun and he would shoot the gun and the bullet would just go through the cars, through the wall and hit the target. And you know, the Holy Spirit's like that. The Holy Spirit's like a magnum gun. He, he's unstoppable. He's unstoppable, my friend. And we need to realize that when the Holy Spirit moves, nothing can stop it. The world may mock God. The church may feel weak. But the Holy Spirit will do his work and no one will be able to ignore Jesus as the Holy Spirit moves. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The Holy Spirit shows the world a judgment. The Holy Spirit points to Christ. Philippians chapter 3. Notice here how the Holy Spirit's working in Paul and notice what Paul does. He points to Christ. Listen. Here's a man of the Spirit. Philippians chapter 3. 1 to 14. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, wherein he might trust in the flesh, I am all. Circumcised on the eighth day, the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning the zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Ye doubtless that I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already obtained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if any, that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So for Paul, it's all about Christ. He's pointing to Christ. This is a man of the Spirit. A lot of preachers today, it's all about them. A lot of preachers on the television, it's all about them. A lot of pastors today in churches, it's all about them. They talk relentlessly and all the time about themselves. In fact, 95% of sermons that you hear today, the preachers are making themselves out to be heroes. It's all about themselves and their stories about who they are. For Paul, it's about Christ. The Spirit of God is working in him, and the Spirit points to Christ, and Paul points to Christ. That's when you know when the work of God is at work in a powerful way, when people are pointing to Christ. The Holy Spirit, says one writer, always glorifies Christ. Whatever kind of work the Holy Spirit does, whatever kind of guidance the Holy Spirit gives, it will always be for Christ's glory. And there's a lot of things going on on, in, on the TV today, on Christian TV and the Good Channel. There's a lot going on today that are not pointing to Christ. They're not lifting Christ up as they should. It's all about man and uh, not about Christ. And when the Spirit of God works, the world cannot ignore him. If you turn to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. 13.32. Acts chapter 4. 13.32. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them. As they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. And you could read right up to verse 32. And it's just relentless. That they tried to stop God at work, but God would not be stopped. The Spirit of God was moving. 
purpose written more. Verse 16, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed an audible miracle had been done by them, and, and is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. For that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak thenceforth to no man in his name. They called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye, for we cannot but speak these things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorify God for that which was done. For the man was above forty years old, and whom this miracle of healing was shown. And being let go, they went to their own company, and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth, and sea, and all that is in, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage, and the people imagine anything? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For the truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand, thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and the grant unto thy servants, that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thy hand to heal, and the signs and wonders may be done. In the name of the holy child Jesus. Now, verse 31, Lord, it says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So they couldn't be stopped with the persecution. We can turn to Acts chapter 9, verse 31, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse... No, 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 no. I think 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. Chapter 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but the demonstration of the Spirit and the power. Jesse Ryle says, I believe the meaning to be, this is about this passage that we just looked at, John 16, verse 8 to 11. He says this, very perceptive what he said through the bishop here. I believe the meaning to be something like this. After the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost, the great advocate of me and my people, shall come into the world with such mighty power that he shall silence, convince, and stop the mouths of your enemies, and oblige them, however unwillingly, to think of me and my cause very differently from, from what they know. Okay? That is what the passage of John 16, verse 8 to 11 is saying. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5. One Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So the Holy Spirit comes in power. So finally, the balance of the Holy Spirit. John 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. Howbeit then the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into what? All truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So he is the spirit of truth. Yeah? He is the spirit of truth. There is a, a fake Christianity and, and a true Christianity. It's like a, uh, you know, I can give you a dollar bill, and it can be a fake dollar bill, or it can be a real dollar bill. And so there are fakes going around that are pretending to be real Christianity, and they are not. And we need to realize that when the Spirit works, he works in conjunction with truth. And there is balance here. There is balance. The Spirit and truth. The Spirit and truth. And a lot of people today are saying the Spirit is moving. The Spirit is working. 
but they don't emphasize truth they don't emphasize sound doctrine that's wrong sound doctrine and the spirit together spirit and truth go together uh, and when the spirit of god is really moving in a nation there will be an emphasis on truth but false teachers will come in and distort the revival and minimize truth and maximize experience but minimize truth but true revival will proclaim christ and biblical truth in the spirit that is the balance let's turn to john chapter 4 john chapter 4 john chapter 4 verse 21 to 24 Jesus said unto a woman, Believe with me, the hour cometh, when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then we turn to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 to 23. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because I know you, you know not the truth, because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. But notice here that truth the truth of who Jesus is is seen as absolutely important. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 and 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. Hereby you know the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist wherein you heard that it is come even now already is it in, in the world so the truth is jesus the god man came down and died on the cross and shed his blood for our sin that's the truth and, and, and that needs people to teach it biblically sound it, so that we understand it in our minds and experience it in our hearts but so we need the spirit and truth be very very wary of bible teachers that minimize truth minimize sound teaching about Jesus because that's dangerous so let's go to John chapter 16 again verse 13 to our text it's a bit noisy in here it's an internet cafe so forgive me uh, John chapter 16 verse 13 it says how be it when he the spirit of truth come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that you shall speak and he shall show you things to come George Whitfield said this all whole days and weeks have I spent prostrate on the ground in silent vocal prayer that is a man seeking the power of the Holy Spirit I want to say to you today the Spirit of God is here given to the church he is working in the church and you need him to do your ministry ask God to to, to give you the power of the Holy Spirit in your ministry and to work in your ministry by the Holy Spirit. So Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, verse 5 to 13. Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11. It's getting a bit noisy in here. Luke chapter 11, verse 5 to 13. It says these words. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, let me three loaves, for a friend of mine is in his journey, is to come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee, I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. 
For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to him that ask him? So I would say, ask for the Holy Spirit. Second, yield. No man is ever fully accepted until he has, first of all, been utterly rejected. In other words, we have to feel, uh, we have to yield to God uh, in our lives. Galatians 6 14. Galatians 6 14. God forbid that I should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world is crucified to the world. Walk. So we ask, we yield, and we walk. A baptism of the holiness, a demonstration of God the living, is the crying need of our day. Duncan Campbell. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14 and 26. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 14 to 26. So walk in the Spirit of God. For all the Lord is fulfilled in one word, even thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one another. This I say, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. There are contrary to one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of being glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So we've come near to the end of this uh, message, and uh, just to recap, uh, we looked at an introduction to the Holy Spirit, about uh, the Holy Spirit... Uh, points to Christ. We looked at the reality of the Holy Spirit, that we get persecuted as we follow God. We looked at the necessity of the Holy Spirit, that these dry bones can live. And we looked at the power of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> that he is unstoppable like a magnum. And then we looked at the balance of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> that he is spirit and truth. And then we've concluded that we ask for the Holy Spirit, yield to the Spirit, and we walk in the Spirit. And uh, like I said, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of sermons that I've done and lectures and all over the place. Uh, if you just type in my name, Jason Burns, you should find them on YouTube. <coughs> there are about 2,000 uh, sermons, lectures, and other various bits of scholarly material that I've done over the years. And there's a couple of thousand, or at least a thousand, crazy videos that I did years ago. Uh, messing with the atheists, which the atheists have saved, try and make me look bad, and you probably find them knocking around. But also, if you they they use them to try and uh, damage my reputation. But uh, if you keep searching and looking around, you'll find good channels of lectures and sermons that I've done that are ready for and get a blessing and try and find those and and reject and don't look at the crazy videos they don't make. So. Um, if you want to use this video for your church uh, Bible study group, please feel free to. If you want to make a DVD of these sermons or lectures or anything that I've done uh, to pass around to people and uh, to build them up in their faith, then uh, please feel free to, to do that. So um, let's uh, come before the Lord and ask his blessing. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your blessings, Lord, and we give you the prayers and the glory. And Father, I just pray that this message will be a blessing to your people. And Father, it would help them to walk in the Spirit and to trust in the Holy Spirit to do His work. And Father God, you will do your work, that you're a great God and you're a mighty Saviour and you'll awaken your people.
and build your church by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I'm going to go on to Athanasius TV. I've just done a, a sermon on uh, a study of the book of Ruth on another channel. And I'm doing another sermon now, or certainly another message on Athanasius TV. Uh, so if you want to go there, there's a, a message called um, God Will Fight For You. And uh, that will be my final ministry today. I hope this has been a blessing and I hope it's been an encouragement to you. So thank you for listening and God bless you. Take care.